This is part 14 of Razor Pages tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to edit data using ASP.NET Core Razor Pages framework. At the moment, on this employee list page, when we click edit, nothing happens. What we want to do is redirect the request to edit Razor Page. We don't have edit Razor Page yet, so let's add it to our project. I'm going to add it to this employees folder. So right click, add Razor Page. Let's name it edit. There we go. Edit Razor Page is created and this is the index page that displays the list of employees. And here we have the HTML for the three buttons, view, edit and delete. And when we click this edit button, we want to send the request to the edit Razor Page. Actually, the code for this edit button is going to be very similar to this view button. So let's make a copy of this and then change the bits that are required. So first of all, the text is edit. And when this button is clicked, we want to redirect the request to the edit razor page in the employees folder and to the edit razor page. We also want to pass the ID of the employee that we are editing. So let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. Reload this employees list razor page. And then when we click edit, notice by default, employee ID is passed in the URL as a query string parameter. Let's pass it as a route parameter instead. For that, in the edit razor page display template, let's include ID as a route parameter. And let's also include the min route constraint to ensure employee ID is an integer and the value is greater than or equal to one. Notice now when we click edit, employee ID is passed in the URL as a route parameter. All that is left right now is to use this employee ID, retrieve the respective employee details and display them on this razor page for editing. From the design standpoint, we want our edit razor page to look like this. First, let's retrieve the respective employee details. For that, let's inject this iEmployee repository service and let's do that using a constructor. Let's call the parameter employee repository. This service is in Razor Pages tutorial dot services namespace. Let's bring that in and let's also generate the required private field by pressing control period and then selecting the second option. Next, let's create a public property of type employee. And let's also name this property employee. This is the property our display template will bind to. We'll see that in just a bit. Let's bring in the required namespace. The employee ID that we are editing is passed in the URL as a route parameter. And within the page model class, this onGet method handles a get request to this edit razor page. So let's include a parameter here with name ID. And then model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically bind this route parameter value with this method parameter, which we can then use to retrieve the respective employee details. So let's use this injected employee repository service for that. And on that, we have get employee method. And to this method, let's pass the incoming ID. And then let's store the employee data that we get back in this property. At this point, if this employee property is still null, that means we have not found the respective employee with this provided ID. So let's redirect the request to this not found razor page. Before we do that, let's change the return type of this method to I action result. And here is the required code to check if the employee property is null. And if it is, we are redirecting the request to the not found razor page. Else, if we have found the employee, then we want to re-render this page so the end user can edit the employee details. Next, we need to implement the display template. Remember, we want our edit razor page to look like this. We want a pair of text boxes to be able to edit name and email and a drop down list to edit department. We'll discuss how to update employee photo in our upcoming videos. First, we need a form. We want to be able to update employee data using a post request. So let's set the method attribute to post and we want some margin on the top. So let's use bootstrap empty dash three class. Empty stands for margin top. 
We don't want the user to be able to change employee ID, but we need it when we post this edit tracer page back to the server to be able to update employee data. So let's include a hidden input field to store employee ID. And for that, we're using ASP-4 tag helper and let's bind it to employee.id. If you're new to tag helpers, we discuss them in detail from parts 35 to 40 in our ASP.NET Core tutorial for beginners course. Next, we need a pair of text boxes to be able to edit employee name and email. Notice in this first div right here, we have a label and an input element. And both these controls are bound to employee.name. And again, for that, we're using ASP-4 tag helper. And all these classes that you see, call SM2, call form label, form group row, these are Bootstrap 4 classes for styling. And notice the second div here. Here, we have a label and an input element for editing employee email. Next, we need a drop-down list to be able to edit employee department. Here is the code required for that. I'll explain this in just a bit. First, let's fix the red squiggly line that we have under this DEPT type. If you recollect from our previous videos, this type is present in this namespace, pages tutorial dot models. So we have to include the required using declaration. And we can include that using declaration either on this edit razor page itself or we can include it in the view imports file. That way it will be available for all the razor pages. For the department select list, we are using a label and a select element. And notice both of them are bound to employee.department property. And then a select list also contains a list of options. And to get the list of options, we are using sp-items tag helper along with this HTML helper, html.get enum select list. And to this method, we are passing our DEPT enum. So the options of this enum are going to be the options within the select list. In addition to all these options, we also want please select as the first option. So we have hard coded that here. Finally, we need these two buttons, update and cancel. Here is the HTML for that. So the first button here is of type submit and the text on that is update and the second button is cancel. And when we click this button, we want to redirect the request to employee slash index razor page. And this index razor page displays the list of all employees. Let's save these changes and take a look at the browser. At the moment, we are on the employee list page. When we click edit, we see the respective employee details. And when we click cancel, we go back to the list page. But if we click update, notice the page refreshes and we lose the existing employee details. We'll discuss implementing update functionality in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.